Hello, I'm Harvey Goblin, Jr., Chairman of the Lumbee Tribe, and we're here again at the Stronghold at the Henry Berry Lowry House at the Lumbee Tribe Cultural Center. And for some weeks now, since the start of the uh, pandemic, I've had uh, Reverend Mike Cummins on my mind, uh, and the, uh, he's the ex-retired uh, executive director of uh, Burnt Swamp Baptist Association. And he and his wife, his beautiful wife, who is Kahari and uh, Miss Quay, and they, uh, they MC the Senior Miss Lumby pageant. Unfortunately, this summer we won't be able to have that. We'll, we'll have it next summer. But, you know, Preacher Mike, you've known me since I was very young. Uh, one of the best friends to Sheila and me, you know, we've been, we started dating when we were 16, but one of our best friends was Tim Cummins, your yeah. brother. And he was a man, a young man that just had a heart for his family, his community, his people. And if you were his friend, yeah. You, didn't, you, you felt like you didn't really need another friend because yeah. he was the epitome of a good best friend yeah. from the heart and soul yeah. and very intelligent, Yeah, very intelligent. So we miss him. We talk about him frequently. But uh, knowing uh, each other all these years, I wanted to, you just come in now. We're in some turbulent times and I'd like to start off the conversation and just ask you uh, through the pandemic uh, and COVID-19, what do you see going on in our world and in our community at this time? Yeah, well, you can see that both of us are very much aware of how to actually look out for one another in this pandemic. This pandemic, it is, it is a threat to the, to the whole community. It's not just my problem. It's not just your problem. It's a problem we share. And so I wear this mask, not necessarily for me. I wear this mask. If I walk into Piggly Wiggly, I don't know who's going to be there. But whoever's there is somebody I need to care about. Somebody I need to, you know, if there's something I can do to be helpful to, for them, you know, that's what I want to do. I, I, I want to be like that. But So I wear this mask for anybody I might happen to come into contact with. And I want to say, too, I appreciate you wearing yours and other people who wear theirs. Now, I've, according to the information we've been given on this, uh, on this uh, disease, on this virus, I am actually in that, in that high risk category. So am I. <laughs> well, yeah. And I'm in there for on a couple of, of, of accounts. Well, maybe more than that, maybe several. One, I'm in that age category right. where uh, it seemed like we have a harder struggle with it uh, of several counts. Now that I think of my age, I've got some COPD. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've got some COPD that, uh, you know, what used to when I was preaching and, and through the years, I've been a very intense kind of preacher. <laughs> that, and so I say, you know, I can't bring heat like I used to, but I can shine the light now. But anyway, <laughs> so I've got some COPD. Uh, I'm a minority. I belong to a, I belong to a, a, a group of people who have, uh, who have serious issues with chronic diseases mm -hmm. uh, such as uh, uh, such as uh, uh, the, the lung disease that I that I'm dealing with or uh, other people around me diabetes uh, high blood pressure we've just got all sorts of, of of other kinds of chronic diseases we struggle with as a, as a Lumbee people mm -hmm. so I wear this mask because I don't know who I'm going to be running into that that really may be on the edge and I don't know what I'm carrying. You know, I haven't been tested because I haven't felt like I needed to be tested. I'm not against testing. And I was so thankful to hear that the tribe had called on Cherry to help out with that, yes, uh, with that testing. And, uh, and when Sean Penn had uh, helped us bring that in, well, that was good news to see that. And I think that, that anybody who, who felt like they wanted to be tested and had that opportunity, that's a great thing because uh, we, we really need to have a mindset of just thinking about each other and thinking about our community as we move about, you know, in our daily lives. Right. Now, you know, I, I need to say too that being, being a pastor, I'm a pastor now of a church, and so I'm, I'm, I'm out a lot with other people. I've had the most funerals in the last six or eight weeks and uh, most of them have been, been elderly people, not all of them, but most of them have been elderly people. So that's a time, you know, the funeral time is a time that we've just, we've kind of restricted ourselves. 
but ministers are there. They're interacting and uh, uh, in a limited kind of fashion. But, but uh, so for myself, when, when, when I heard the explanation of how helpful wearing a mask was, hey, I said, hey, that's easy. Right. I mean, that's, that's something I can do. That's simple for me to do. And uh, so I've got two or three of these things that I try to keep them <laughs> handy. And you know, I see that uh, there are a lot of people <laughs> that kind of don't pay that any attention. And it seems now that we've got into warmer weather, we are really getting relaxed about this. Uh, more and more people are kind of just feeling like this is not a serious threat. But if, but if I could just say anything right now to the Lumbee community, I would say, let's not take this COVID-19 too lightly. Let's just be careful and respecting each other. Our church, Deep Branch Church, we're not going back in our building at least until July. Okay. At least until July. Even I mean, though there was a court over overriding the governor's yeah. executive order. Yeah, and, and uh, we're, we're thankful that we've got a governor who is mindful about us, but, but I understand that he really didn't have a right to keep us from going to church. And we're not, we didn't stay out of church because of the governor. We stayed out of church because we felt like this was the way we could help our community best. Yes, sir. The law was not keeping us away from church. It was our, it was our, uh, it was our regard for the well-being of our community that kept us from, that's keeping us from going back into our building. We miss our people. I miss the fire out of our folks. And, uh, but, but it's not a matter of, of the law keeping us out of church. We're choosing just to wait a little longer uh, to see how we're going to be doing here in Robinson County. And we have been doing well in Robinson County. And if the, maybe, maybe the tide is going to uh, turn, but I can guarantee you over at Deep Branch, you know, Deep Branch is an old, old Indian church, old community over there. And, uh, uh, you know, those communities like that, you know, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the foundation of our Lumbee life. Our communities that had the church and the school. All Absolutely. In it's a school right across the highway yes, sir. from the church. And sometimes the preacher was. Yep, he was both. He might have been a school teacher or might have worked in that manner as well as being a preacher. But anyway, uh, you know, when you, when you actually look at the fabric of the Lumbee community and where we've come from, you just mentioned school and church and family. Man, that's who we were. A little business here and there, uh, working on the farm, just making our livelihood right out of the ground. Right. And, uh, and that's who we've been. And, uh, and so community, community, loom large in the life of us as a people. It was, it was absolutely a, uh, an important feature of our life, guarding our community. Usually you live right nearby some of your cousins, your daddy, your mama's brothers or sisters and their families. So, so looking out for one another has just been part of who we've been. So I just found it easy to stick on a mask. You look like I don't know what when you wear these things. <laughs> but uh, yeah, now my wife's an artist and a, a seamstress. She makes uh, regalias uh, uh, for a, a lot of Lumbee women, but uh, she's made several masks and this is yeah. one she made for, for yeah. me to wear. And I got several others. Yeah. But let me ask you this question. You mentioned funerals and I've been to a lot of them myself in the mm. last few months. And, and it's an honor to, to go and, uh, and uh, to a funeral where families grieving and to be a part of that and bring some kind of, uh, hopefully some kind of words of comfort that God might give me to say. But you know, we're a people that like to embrace. We like to fellowship. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. and when we, some one of us is hurting, we bring everybody together and we just yeah. do, you know, mass gatherings and That's mass right. hugs. And we can't do that now. How, what, what does that do to our spirit and to yeah. our, uh, our psych psychology part of us not yeah. being able to do those things now. Well, I'll tell you, it is strange for us in our community. You know, we, we usually fill up the house, sit on the porch. Yes, sir. Funeral home brings out chairs. And in, particularly in nice weather, I mean, it is just community time to flock in there and just hang out with the family. Well, that's gone. That is really gone. As a matter of fact, with, with a lot of these funerals I've been a part of, visiting in the home, 
it's, it's like, you know, I've, I've been doing it by telephone because of just respecting the danger that we, that we could be putting ourselves in. And it has really been a strange, weird kind of experience that we've gone through, not being able to comfort one another and uh, just embrace one another and grieve together. This has been a tough time for families who've lost loved ones. Yes, I'll be honest, this has been a tough time. Funerals at, at, the, at the graveyard, and uh, it has been hard. It has been hard, but, but we've, we've been doing that because we're trying, to, uh, we're trying to think that in the long run, right now, we really don't have a better choice except to respect the fact that this disease is just horrible. And uh, we're just praying that God's going to give some of these really brilliant minds in science and medicine uh, some clue as to how to get a hold of, uh, of uh, some, kind of, some kind of vaccine yes, sir. for this disease. That's, that's where we are. Let me uh, ask you, you've, uh, as long as I've known you, you've always cared about the people. And you, you know uh, uh, a lot about the Lumbee history and especially about the churches and the schools and the ministry. And uh, you've represented us all across this nation and the world. You've been in Congress and have prayed. You've done so many things in your lifetime. But let me ask you about a, a social injustice a little bit. You know, uh, Mr. George Floyd, uh, his passing has caused us to reflect on uh, social justice in America and, and right down to our own communities. Yeah. How do you think that's affecting our world right now and our country and, and, our, and us as Alumbee people? Yeah. Well, it in is our just, interaction with others. It is just a sad fact on humanity. Now, Spiritually, from, the, from, from my view of our, of our spiritual uh, essence, we are broken people. Humanity is broken. We're, we're, we're self-centered. We're selfish. We've got to have things our way. And not only just What's that. What's that, sin? Yeah, that's just sin. That's <laughs> what that, that from a spiritual standpoint, yes, that's the way we'd, we'd explain that in the church from the Bible is that we are broken people. Now what that brokenness has done, it has left us creating just, just, just uh, relational problems. It's amazing how, how, how people, it seems like on, in every continent, indigenous people have been essentially just run over by, by conquerors who come in and for some, well, because of our brokenness, just come in and, and subdue whoever's in the way mm -hmm. of their progress. Now, we've seen that in America. That's who we are as uh, native people. And when, when, when Africans were brought here in 1619, and they have really been, been felt the brunt of probably the ugliest aspect of humanity, Native Americans as well. And human beings have just been so cruel to one another. And uh, I don't know what makes this seem like that the reality of a, of a lighter skin person just seems to, <laughs> seems to be in, in some ways on, on the end of discriminating against a darker skin person. And that's such a silly thing, but it's been a reality in, in our past. And it's not all just about complexion. But humanity has been cruel to itself. And what we're seeing right now with the, with the death of George Floyd, and uh, to watch the videos as America has been looking at that video in the last few days, uh, it is just heartbreaking. It is so moving. And, uh, and, and it just rips your heart out of you to see a human being uh, just, just, just wants to live, just wants to live. And, and somebody who has a, a capability of, of taking his life just chooses to do that and not allow him to live. That has been one of the most difficult things to observe. But it may be, maybe that's kind of, a, uh, that's kind of an image as to what he, the history of humanity has been in, in one human being's treatment of another, of another human being. And... Uh, there's no way 
to look at that and be able to tolerate that. And so these folks who are protesting and marching and creating noise, you know, it's almost like, it's sad to say, but that's, the, that's what you have to do. Now, you don't have to break windows and businesses and steal their property. Yes, sir. And you certainly don't have to do that. Somebody has come along and really tried to, uh, tried to we use the word hijack, you know, the folks who have been trying to, trying to create some, to, some awareness here. And so I certainly, I certainly sympathize with, agree with, and stand with those folks who are raising their voice against that kind of onslaught against humanity like we saw in Minneapolis. Um, you know, I've, uh, you know, my experience growing up as a Native American, I've known some of the, I've known some of the sting of prejudice and racism and it's, it's hurtful, it's painful. Yes, sir. And now after, you know, here I am, I'm growing into my senior years. And my hope is that these younger people that are coming along may do a better job. Now, they're not gonna, they're not gonna solve the problem because we essentially are still a broken people. But I, I'm, I'm hopeful that we're gonna do a better job over the, uh, with this matter of just our human relationships when it comes down to just pure stinking racism and prejudice, that we somehow or another are going to get find a way to, to to live with each other better than what we've been, than what our history is, mm -hmm. than what it's been, and it's sad. It is sad, and you know people are wondering where God is, and I'm sure God is weeping over what He's seeing us do. Could God stop it? You, you bet He could, but He is literally brokenhearted, I believe. By what, by what he's observing in us, in people that have his image. That man who, was, who lay on that pavement and died on that pavement, that man's made in the image of God. As much so as Mr. Chauvin, who was over his neck, with his knee on his neck, Mr. Chauvin is made in the image of God. And that you know that must break the heart of God, to see his image doing and creating that kind of, of conflict and murderous, that kind of just murderous assault on one another. That is, uh, you got to you got to think that God is grieving over that. Yes, sir. Yeah, preacher Mike. Let me ask you one last question. Um, if you could, how would you? What would you say to not just the Lumbee people? You know, I'm elected by the Lumbee people. What would you say to the Lumbee people and all people of this whole? all humanity of this world, what can we look for inside ourselves and outside in the others to find some sort of uh, resurgence of hope and peace going forward? Yeah, yeah. Well, what I could say is, you know, we're becoming much more individualistic, much more independent, and as a result, self-serving, it seems. And uh, the connections that we that we thrive on and can do best on a connection with each other, just human relationships we establish. Community life like we once, not only were nurtured by, but, but actually just, just created possibilities for life and, and, and success for us. It seems that we're just, we're just now living in a period where so, so many more of us are becoming just, just filled with self-interest in ourselves. And, our own opinions, our own ideas, what I think is right, I don't care what you say, that kind of, mm -hmm. that kind of attitude. And I value my opinion, but I want to value yours yes, as well. I want to value other people's opinion. I know everybody is not, for instance, a believer in God. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to trip out over that. I understand that not everybody perceives life and reality the way that, the way that I do. But if we could, if we could learn how, just to respect each other, human beings, who have the, who have the same interest in living, uh, who have, whatever person they are, if they're if they're, if they're people of uh, of uh, of a lifestyle that we don't agree with, they still have the same anticipation for their family, for their children, uh, for their homes that I have for mine, and my sense is if I have a right. If there's something that, that is important for my life and I have a right to it, then you have that same right if that's important to your life. And it's not just, it's not just about my life 
and my rights and my opinions and what's up and what's going on with me. It is what's going on all around me with people, with, with you know, the people I'm connected with or related to. Just the sense that <laughs> this world is not just here for me. It is here for all of us. Mm -hmm. And I am here if I can make a difference for, you know, to just to somehow or another to be a blessing in any way to anybody else. And, and somehow, I've, you know, I've, uh, you know I've, I've caught on to some reason for being here. Is it that my life can count for something upbuilding in the life of somebody else? That's, uh, if we could recover that, if we could find a way to that. And I don't know that we can. Uh, I know to, to survive as humanity, uh, we're going to have to find a way just to, just to come to respect and value other people, regardless of color, social status, uh, intellect. It doesn't matter. We have got to get to the place to where we value anybody, everybody that's, that comes our way. We've got to get to that. Thank you. I tell you, to have a man like a preacher Mike that I've known since I was a kid, and uh, now we're both getting a lot older, and to hear wisdom that I've heard today, uh, it's just uh, just warms my heart to have this conversation with you. And I'm sure people that see this will feel the same way. I just felt like it was a time for us to have a conversation like this for the people mm -hmm. and to open these kinds of dialogues amongst our people yeah. that you're describing to where we can get where we need to be. Yeah. And not just as the Lumbee tribe, but for all humanity across the oh world. So thank you for taking the time to do this and uh, thank you, for Ms. you and Miss Quay, for your service to the Lumbee tribe and to all people across this great country. And I just want to say to everyone, please find that peace and hope it has been described here today by a preacher Mike and may God bless the Lumbee tribe and may God surely bless the United States of America. Thank you.